Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Pixie Love. You guys can call me Pixie. And today we're doing some R slash fat logic. Yes, super excited. I think this video is gonna be shorter than normal, but it's gonna be juicy because I only bring you guys the best, right? Um, anyway, I wanna say you guys are amazing, super supportive. I know I've not been posting as much, but you guys are still always there for me and I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully I find some time I've been rearranging stuff on my work. I keep saying that, but I've been re I like rearranged my work schedule <laughs> and then had to like work on what normally is my day off and then had to do open the clothes. It's just a lot of mess and we've had a lot. But I moved my um computer desk into a different room, so it's not in my bedroom, so it's like a separate space, so I feel more motivated to record and stuff in the morning when I'm like more motivated to do things. I also worked out with my schedule at work where I'm Every other week I get an extra day off, so maybe that'll give me some more time to record and edit. Plus my podcast, my friend coming back up, that's a lot. So I'm trying, but you guys are, once again, always extremely supportive. So thank you guys for being the fucking best. Like, honestly, thank you. But anyway, let's get into these entitled fat people. Gym rats are so strong, because I'll be damned if I eat dry chicken and rice for the rest of my life. They're not strong. They just have eating disorders and they delude themselves into thinking that they don't. Eating healthy nowadays is turned for having an eating disorder, laughing my ass off. Right? Oh my god. Ugh. First of all, first of all, chicken and rice is good. Okay, I'm not even a huge fan of rice, but something about chicken and rice makes it good. It's like the juice for the fucking chicken gets on the rice and makes it all edible. I can eat that. For the rest of my life, probably not. But like, <laughs> the real person who has like, who has an illusion is the person who thinks that eating chicken and rice is an eating disorder. Like if anyone has dis disillusioned themselves into thinking that they're right, it's you guys. Like, y'all are just, I'm just glad there's someone else that already, you know, made the point for me in this post. I don't really have to do much talking, but it's like, bitch, come on. Like, what is this? What are we... What are we doing? Let me know because I can't. I can't function. I can't think like you guys. I just don't understand. People who don't eat breakfast or only do so occasionally are twice as likely to be overweight than those who eat two breakfasts. As a fat person who doesn't really eat breakfast, I'm highly offended. How dare you? How dare you? Okay, let me tell you. I have personally never been a breakfast person. I love eating breakfast foods. I love eggs and sausages and bacon and pancakes and waffles. And I would put syrup in my veins if I could. But I just don't eat breakfast. I'm the type of person I'll do breakfast for dinner any day. You know what I mean? But I'm not hungry in the morning. I don't like to typically eat until like one or two, which kind of helps with my intuitive eating. But I don't skip breakfast to lose weight. Like that's just not, even in school, like I got free breakfast at school and I never ate it. I didn't eat it until it was lunchtime. Um, so like, I don't understand. Like, are you trying to say that people who like don't eat breakfast, they like to, they're trying to skip breakfast to lose weight, but haha, -ha, actually you're gonna be fatter if you don't eat breakfast. You can eat two breakfasts and then eat nothing for dinner. I don't, and who did this study? Like I need to know. I've never heard of a study where someone had two breakfasts. Like just, I can't. And I need to stop saying that word because it's really bad for my lisp. And we're gonna keep going on because this is just a hot mess. Thin privilege is not having to think about whether you're fit. You know what fat privilege is? Getting to fucking complain about how unattractive you are and everyone feeling bad for you because we all know it's fucking true. I'm sorry, that was me. <laughs> okay, that was like a joke. But like, you know what fat privilege is? Getting to like, my last couple of videos I've, I've done um, TikToks, right? And one of them, this girl was complaining about like thin privilege and how like she's so oppressed because she knows the guy isn't going to hit on her at a bar. That's what fucking fat privilege is. Your life being so fucking good that... Your only problems is people not fucking hitting on you. Like, and it's so funny because, like, 
lot of these people think that like thin people or skinny conventionally attractive women have no problems in their lives and it's like are you fucking kidding me you think that like hardships are only conveyed to fat people or people who are marginalized like as a black overweight female I have a lot of fucking problems in my life and honestly besides personal things being fat isn't one of my problems like it has slightly affected my health and I know it'll be worse the longer I stay fat but for the most part like I'm not bullied for being fat I'm not inconvenienced that much really from being fat except for you know I can't wear anything but sneakers to work because because of my body weight and my flat foot I have immense pain from wearing like heels or sandals to my job which is what they want us to wear um other than that like I don't have a lot of major problems but I have a lot of issues because I'm a person of color. Now, I know plenty of skinny, conventionally attractive women who have a lot of fucking problems and their life is not fucking perfect. I had this beautiful fucking friend in high school. She was like a new girl. Um, and I remember her like being bullied and I don't know what she was bullied about. And honestly, I just think because this new pretty girl moved to the town and the other like popular skinny bitches just didn't like that because she was gorgeous. Like blonde hair. I don't remember. I, I want to say she had like green eyes, but like gorgeous blonde bombshell. Like I fucking love this girl and as sweet as can be. And I invited her to like sit with me because I was used to being a new girl. And like we got to know each other and we became a part of the same, um, youth group at um a program it wasn't like church because it wasn't it was like a separate program i was separate from a church but it was just a program we went to and like we got to get to know each other and like learn each other's life story and this girl had like a rough fucking life and she recently reached out to me a couple months ago about how like you know the kindness i showed her just like you know helped her and she was in a really bad place and like (laughs) i love her like i love her as a person i love hearing her succeed in life we still follow each other on social media and like a person from and i'm bringing this up because like a fat accepted person would see this girl and think oh she's pretty she has no problems in the world she has no problems getting men or this and that and she's lived a rough fucking life and like if you think that someone's life is good because they don't have problems getting men or they're attractive, then you've lived a pretty good life to think that those are the only bad things that happen to you. Like, if you had real struggles, real actual issues, you would not be complaining that people don't find you attractive, that, like, people don't objectify your body, or, like, a guy's not gonna buy you a fucking drink. Like, it's, like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, the things... The, the thin privilege, like, is, like, <sighs> I can't. I fucking can't. I went on a tangent, but, like, that's me. I just fucking can't. But the research. People say about the supposed health risk of being in a larger body. Guess what? Some of those studies also associate being tall with living longer, but you don't see society obsessing with making everyone taller. Fat phobia is behind diet culture, not for a health concern. Okay. But guess what? You cannot make someone taller. You can genetically make the opportunity of people being born to be taller, but you cannot make someone taller. If someone's genetic composition is not going to make them tall, they're not going to be tall. But you can change your weight. Whether it is healthy or not, it is a factor you can fucking change. Let's be honest. Okay? Because they're just like, well, maybe the weight loss isn't healthy. At the end of the day, you can fucking do it, though. I'm just saying. Like, let's get the fucking health shit out of the way. You can change your fucking weight. It is something that can be done. Just like you can gain weight, you can fucking lose weight. I can't make myself two inches taller or two inches shorter, but I can make myself fucking 50 pounds lighter or 50 pounds heavier. Okay? And I also don't know if that's necessarily true, because also at a certain at a certain point, being too tall decreases your life. Like some of the world's tallest people have short lifespans. This is the first time I've seen like being taller makes people live longer. So I don't know, but 
that you can't focus like if that was the case you know like you were saying maybe science can focus on oh let's just you know have taller people procreate like which we don't choose to fucking procreate so that's something we can do but what science can do is give you the information you need to live a healthier lifestyle by changing the things you can change they can't change your height but they can change your eating patterns you well you can change your eating patterns you can change what you put into your body to change your weight right so that's what they're focusing on the things that you can do personally to help yourself like i don't understand how fucking dense you are oh POV, when someone tries to tell me I'm unhealthy because of my size, but they aren't a doctor and don't have access to my medical records. I take the train to work, right? And I had a very uncomfortable encounter with a homeless man who was definitely on, like, I don't know if he was on something, but there was definitely something wrong with him. And I don't have his medical records or I'm a doctor, but I can clearly see from the visual way he was acting he was either on something or he wasn't mentally all fucking there. I can look at Eugenia Cooney, right? Is that right? Yeah, I can look at Eugenia Cooney and tell that by her weight, she's unhealthy. I can look at a fucking crackhead and tell you they're fucking on something. You don't have to be a fucking doctor to see fucking obvious signs of someone being fucking unhealthy. I'm just like, God, these people are stupid. I, I just, I can't deal. I can't. I don't know how you deal, but I can't deal. Because this is just, oh, you know what I mean? All right, this is going to be my last one. And I'm probably going to go on a little rant because this, I think I've talked about this before. Yeah, anyway, let me read first, okay? I know I'm going to go to hell for this, but oh well. A friend and I just got into it because she was complaining about how she was fat. She was 167 pounds. Oh my! Instead of being a supportive friend, I gave her shit. And I did apologize, but not before explaining to her that she had no fucking clue what legit fat is and like how exponentially harder it is to lose weight when you are legit fat is it just me am i the villain am i the drama yes you're the drama yes it's you if you know you're gonna go to hell for something you know you're doing something wrong right and like you know you're in the fucking wrong but you want validation from your other fat ass friends who live in this fat ass bubble where everything is fucking good and joyous except for other people not being fucking fat like listen the reason i just pissed me off so much is because I, I mentioned it before but i have most of my sisters are all at a very healthy weight my little sister um in the last couple of years she's lost weight now um gained a lot of weight for herself and and i say a lot like she gained a lot but like for her she gained a lot. I think she was close to almost 200 pounds, she told me. And she's normally 140. She is 5'4". You know, she was in the military. Like, she's a built girl. And to be almost 200 pounds, like, was really fucking hard for her. She was, like, and I'm 5'7". So I'm, like, three inches taller than her. And, like... I can't compare myself to her. Like, because I'm like, girl, I care that every goddamn day. But the difference is she, like, felt the effects of the weight on her. Like, she was feeling how, like, the weight was expecting. <laughs> she was feeling how the weight, you know, affected her body. Me back in high school would have been like, bitch, you're not fat. Like, are you kidding me or whatever? And blah, 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 blah. And even seeing her because i didn't see her in person during this time like facetime with her i didn't see much difference but when she like when i saw side by side photos you can clearly tell the difference and it's just like so fucking annoying it's i i get it i fucking get being the fat friend and having your skinnier friend complain about gaining weight and needing to lose weight and this and that I fucking get it. I promise you. I get the pain and the hurt 
that you feel because you're like, bitch, if you need to lose weight, then bitch, I need to lose weight. Yes, you need to lose weight. But at that moment in time, your friend is not venting to you to make you feel bad. Your friend is venting to you because they need you there. And they're hoping like, well, you know, you're a little overweight too, so maybe you understand how I feel, you know? And you're just like, no, um, how dare you complain about being fat because you're not as fat as me. Every, like, fuck off. You can see, like, I hope this person drops you as a friend because you're a horrible fucking friend. You are selfish, you're condescending, you're egotistical, and you only give a fuck about yourself. Like, that is absolutely, positively disgusting. Like, disgusting. And when my sister was telling me about how she felt when she gained weight, I was like, girl, I completely understand you. Like, I get it. Like, I, I know what it's like to be overweight. I know it is not fun. And, like, it's... And I might have said something like, at least you don't weigh as much as me, to make her feel better, not to make her feel bad for me. No, it's to be like, you don't want to get this big, girl. You want to lose the weight. Like, you got this, you know? That's what it was, if I did say that to her. But, like, it just pisses me off. And then I have friends who are, like, really skinny that want to gain weight because they feel really small. And I'm just like, oh, if I had your body, I, like, no. Because that's not my fucking place. You guys are weird. It's fucking weird. I don't understand. I just... I just... I don't understand being so... So self-centered. And I am someone who's very fucking confident in themselves. Like, I love myself. If y'all haven't realized it before, I love myself a lot. I am fucking awesome, okay? But I'm, like, not self-centered, whatsoever i care about other people i empathize and emp i empathize and empathize and like i feel other people i think about how my actions affect other people and with the words that i say and yet you just only think the world revolves around you and i could never never be friends with someone like you i don't understand how to fuck you have a friend i really don't your friend deserves better if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure you guys leave a like down below. If you guys enjoyed me, make sure you guys subscribe because I do videos whenever I get a chance at this point. And my social media, everything is pixielove5642. In a little bit, you'll see two videos on your screen. One is going to be my most recent upload. Another one's going to be one that YouTube recommends for you. You should click on either video because they're a banger. Why? Because I made it. And I'll see you guys another time. Bye-bye.